From 1965 through to 1971, screened what I feel was one of the most significant programmes ever made by the BBC, Out of the Unknown. The significance in terms of a cultural context I'm not 100% sure about, as it never achieved massive heights of popularity like Doctor Who, but it definitely proved to be important for one major reason in my opinion. It took what were the commonly established grounds of science fiction and pushed it even further. The result of this was something akin to a mishmash of the Twilight Zone and the Outer Limits, but with a much more intellectual feeling to its proceedings and the writing generally. This show very much helped elevate science fiction to another level in a writing perspective generally. If I was to pitch this show to somebody that had never seen it, I would say that the experience one would get is something like classic Doctor Who meets Black Mirror. Aesthetically and production wise, it very much feels like 1960s Doctor Who, since the majority of the surviving episodes are in black and white, but with the writing much more thematic and big in terms of the ideas from an intellectual standpoint. Seriously, several of the installments that can be viewed today for me are like episodes of Black Mirror made 45 years before the inception of it, particularly The Machine Stops. It would achieve much success in its four series near six year run, like that just mentioned installment winning the first prize at a science fiction film festival in 1967, and when the show would ultimately meet its final episode, it ended at the beginning of a golden age of supernatural horror television whilst also being a part of that to an extent. It prominently adapted science fiction stories for the first 38 episodes of the overall run, however with the last 11 in series 4, it switched to an array of fantasy and horror, with science fiction elements randomly placed in the batch here and there. Like with many TV series of the time however, it has been fractured by the sadly ever common case of the missing episodes. Less than half of the 49 instalment run remains, with only 20 existing complete in the archives. The creator, Irene Schubick, ultimately departed the show in 1967 because of new career opportunities, namely being able to co-produce the Wizards Day play with Graham MacDonald, which was a series of original works and adaptations that specialised in more realistic drama. However, she made sure that a collection of 13 scripts for the, at the time, next series of Out of the Unknown was completed before the new venture, which would all ultimately be produced and made as the third series by a new production crew. Eight new adaptations were under the dome of this early colour series of productions, Immortality Incorporated, Liar, The Naked Sun, The Last Lonely Man, Beachhead, Random Quest, The Little Black Bag, and Get Off My Cloud. As well as this, two scripts from a precursory show called Out of This World were reused being The Yellow Pill and Target Generation. The remaining three episodes of the package are instances of original scripts for the series, which were something in the cellar 1 plus 1 equals 1 and a half, and The Fosters. Sadly, of all of the batches of episodes, this is the least represented of the show. The Last Lonely Man is the only one that exists in full, with fragments of audio and video existing from various other episodes. A partial version of The Little Black Bag also exists, which is missing around the first 20 minutes and a slight fraction of the ending. Not to mention that complete audio recordings of the episodes Beachhead and The Yellow Pill exist, alongside one for The Naked Sun that is missing approximately four and a half minutes from two sections near the beginning of the episode. In 1967, Alan Bromley and Roger Parks were made a new producer and script editor for the third series. However, by the point of the inception of the fourth in 1970, they had more freedom with the show. After encouragement, they decided to create the fourth series with strong horror content. The hallmark feature of adaptations was now almost completely abandoned, with 10 of the 11 episodes being original stories. Two years and 20 days after the broadcasting of the season 3 finale, the last series began, which is thankfully much more well represented than the previous, 
with five existent episodes and one complete audio recording. The show was very much known for the dramatizations, I would have said personally, and the missing ones of those are generally more talked about than what we don't have of the original stories. So for this last series to be such a change in direction in terms of the very core concept of the program itself, it feels like a completely different show in a way. Despite the heavy liberation that the production crew took with the series, it still proved to be a successful collection of transmissions overall. However, some were reportedly disappointed with the lack of hard sci-fi that characterised the previous three rounds. Not to mention that To Lay a Ghost was controversial for the time because of how it depicted certain subject matters. The first episode to be broadcasted was Taste of Evil. In it, a new schoolmaster finds that strange things are happening to him. Reasoning within himself realises that it must be connected with a psychic phenomena club. No audio or video material from this episode are known to exist. However, with the next three instalments, they are all preserved in the television archives. The first of these showcases a couple that have moved into a house, only to find a paranormal goings on that link back into the disturbing past of the female main character, Diana Carver. With the second of this trio, a scientist has invented a mind swapping device and intends to use this for his own personal financial benefit, thanks to intentions of money laundering with a body he swaps into. Things go awry, however, when his wife takes a liking to his body swap. Death Day, originally by Angus Hall, is a single adaptation of this series. This psychological horror showcases a drug addict that follows through in recreating what is currently the biggest crime story within his own mentally unstable psychosis. The source material for this particular episode was also adapted by Amicus Productions with Madhouse in 1974. The next two episodes that I would like to mention are the 5th and 7th, The Sons and Daughters of Tomorrow and The Last Witness. The first of these two involved a journalist investigating an unsolved murder in a village, only to find out that the town is being led by a witch. Witness showcased a dying man that has been washed up on a coast, trying to piece together a series of events that have happened within his mind, involving the killing of his own wife. However, many different scenarios and timelines of events happen in Harris's mind because of his own delusional psychosis. I've also heard that this episode dealt with the concept of a ghost that is only able to be seen by certain people at one particular time. The only thing of these particular two episodes that is left is a single 33 second clip from the latter. This video extract was not represented or utilised in the BFI DVD box set and my guesses for this was because they were simply not able to access it, as according to the Zeta Minor website, it is preserved on 16mm film at the Sydney Australian National Archives. However, according to a poster on a missing episodes board, it was believed to have been digitally transferred at some point, probably for archival purposes. Series 4 was known to have been transmitted in the just mentioned country during the 1970s, and here is what I've been able to gather happened there. According to the just mentioned website, this existing clip was made by their censors when they first broadcasted the series in 1972. Going by Mark Ward's book, season 4 also had another transmission beginning on the 17th of November 1973, with the Sons and Daughters of Tomorrow, within Australia also in turn stating that it was the only series of the show to be shown in full abroad. This means that copies of all 11 episodes were shipped to the country at one point, and that it wasn't shown in order for this particular documented broadcast in the book. The reasoning as to why this was the only complete series broadcasted abroad was because of a massive spider's web of copyright that surrounded and entangled the Isaac Asimov adaptations that infested the first three seasons. I believe that this second Australian broadcasting was also the last known television screening of the show until 2003, when 13 to Centaurus was shown on BBC4 as a part of celebrations of the work of the original author J.G. Ballard. As I have now established, 
the closing series appear to have great spotlight time abroad, but over here in the show's homeland, it would also have some good time on the screens. During the main six year run of Out of the Unknown, episodes were actually repeated and some of series three even overlapped in terms of repeats with the first broadcasting of series four. This in turn neatly brings me along to two more episodes of The Bunch, these being The Chopper and The Uninvited, which made for the ninth and 10th installments. Only a complete audio recording from the latter is what remains auditory or video-wise from these episodes. Written by creator of Quatermass Nigel Neal, The Chopper follows a mechanic called Jimmy Reed, as played by Patrick Troughton, who buys a motorbike possessed by the spirit of the previous owner, who died after a tragic accident. In 2022, the BFI hosted a lengthy, multi-day event called Nightmares and Daydreams, which was a celebration of the centenary of Nigel Neal's birth. As a part of these, on the 3rd of April, Doctor Who actor Matthew Waterhouse participated as a part of the cast in a reading of The Chopper, which was presented with sound effects to emulate a radio drama. Whether such a thing has been recorded, or if it is to be repeated in any form, I have no clue, but here's hoping. The uninvited displayed a couple getting ready to move house, only to begin witnessing paranormal activity within their old place of residence. This is another ghost story of the series, and a second written by Michael J. Bird, who had contributed to lay a ghost from earlier on in the season. In 1972, from August to September, a selection of six episodes from the Series 4 collection were repeated. I'm unable to find two of the titles, but the others were The Sons and Daughters of Tomorrow, The Chopper, The Uninvited, and To Lay a Ghost, with the fourth one of those closing these repeats on the 12th of September. A fan by the name of Martin Townley, who made audio recordings of what is stated as, quote, a number of episodes on the Zeta Minor website during these particular repeats. However, the 10th overall episode of the season is the only one to have survived. In consideration of the way this article on the site is worded, I would take a safe guess in saying that perhaps all of these repeats were at one point recorded by Martin. A remastering of the lone existing reel-to-reel -reel tape from this collection was undergone and in turn utilised for the BFI DVD box set. However, because of a lack of photographic material from the episode itself, the reconstruction presented on disc 7 had the track synchronised to a scan of an existing camera script. Welcome Home and The Man in My Head are the last two episodes of the Oval programme to be retained in the archives. The first of these is, for me, one of the weakest episodes presented on the home media release. It showcases a doctor that returns home after a stay in a psychiatric ward, only to find that somebody with the same name with his own has taken up residency. This and some lapse of time from series one, I would personally give both a four or a five out of 10. I get what both of these episodes are going for and they do have some nice ideas, but the plotting of the overall pieces are too vague and underdeveloped in areas for me personally. It seems like they chose a highly cerebral nature over substance. They're not unwatchable, just definitely the ones that I'd be less likely to return to overall. The Man in My Head, however, is pretty much the complete opposite with this being one of four episodes from the disc collection that I would give a 10 out of 10 to. A difficult episode to put as a sentence or two without spoilers, but basically these soldiers are on a mission to infiltrate a missile base and as the episode plays out, it develops into a story of military regime and our main characters discovering something odd about their exhibition. Whenever I did my complete box set watch through of the show, which was in 2020 I'm pretty sure, I remember being extremely impressed by this piece overall. Not to mention that I had echoes of Doctor Who Genesis of the Daleks with the overall design of the episode. Well acted and brilliantly written, 
This is one not to miss if you explore the fragments of the program. A young artist is painting on the beach, with a tramp watching him from the shelter of some rocks. As the two meet and connect, unexplainable events begin to happen. The shattered eye was the conclusion to both the series and the show on the whole, with sadly nothing left in terms of audio or video from the episode. Reportedly, this was seen as a disappointing end to the fourth series by several viewers at the time. It was cited by some as pretentious rubbish, but even the ones that were more positive appeared to have agreed that the plot was convoluted. Unfortunately, it was generally seen as the lowest point of series four. According to the website Zeta Minor, there is some uncertainty in regards to this episode and the chopper, as it's stated here that these two episodes were documented as having been sent to Dubai in the 1970s, but never returned. Out of the Unknown was a massive success for a television series. Over its 6 year and 49 episode run, it had been immensely popular and had won acclaim. So what does the future look like for the program? Will a 5th series happen? Sadly, despite the reception of the creation, there was no more new episodes after this. However, it's safe to say a lot did happen at the time and afterwards. A mountain of material was suggested around the time of the creation of these 11 episodes, and in between it and the confirmation of no fifth series, script editor Roger Parks was even receiving story ideas and possibly scripts in what I guess you could call anticipatory hope for use in a new season, some inspired by this most recent series apparently. The two titles on screen were rejected for use in the show, in part because these would have been serialised stories and that the writers had gotten the ideas for the show confused in turn. Another ghost story by Peter Miller was rejected on the 31st of March 1970, with Rosemary Vance offering a story about some psychic and spiritual concepts as well. Amanda and the House of Two Sisters were both unused as it was not wanted for this new season to fit into the archetypal nature of, at the time, current supernatural British programmes like Mystery and Imagination and Late Night Horror. The Abyss was an idea of a thriller story floated about since 1968. This was eventually rejected in April because it was deemed as being too long. Despite having sufficient horror elements, these two highlighted titles were also rejected. A Tear for Punchinello was thought to not have been suited to television for an effective realisation, and The Paper Trumpet didn't have enough material for a 50 minute episode. A story by Anthony Skeen called Edge of the Forest also didn't happen. The Ghost That Loved the Telly was apparently to have been based on, quote unquote, true events in the USA. Two just married people find an old chest while staying in a caravan hear odd tapping sounds and discover a TV seemingly having the will to turn on and off whenever it pleases. The Corruptors and the Contenders were both apparently submitted. The first was unfortunately done too late into the production for use of inclusion in Series 4, with the other being rejected because it wasn't what the crew were looking for in terms of content. The Prowler was deemed unsuitable for the show, and Station OS1 EWS was thought to have needed a Hollywood movie budget for realisation. If a new series did happen at the time, I can only wonder what would have happened and how it would have been approached. There is no real clear cut and confirmed reasoning as to why a new season never happened, but Mark Ward's book speculates that the BBC simply didn't know what to do with it at this point, because of there being a lot of TV shows from the time that were similar in content to series 4, and that a common critique of said run was that it lacked the impact of the previous ones because of no science fiction. Treading the waters of speculation more here, could it be that the next series would have had a split between sci-fi and horror? to establish an equilibrium of what was newly introduced and what was most known from the series, something like six episodes apiece for each genre. Not to mention that if the show ran on for longer, 
would we have had a better case of preservation in terms of the missing episodes? I think it's safe to say that if the overall run amounted to a total of something like eight series, more attention and care would be put towards the archiving of the episodes to please fans of what would definitely be more intact today seasons of the show if ones were produced later on in the 1970s. After this point, the show effectively faded out, despite some occasional bubbles of activity here and there. Later on in the same decade, Irene Schubick had discussions about a remake of The Machine Stops, which never happened. And in early 1981, a 13, 50-minute proposal for a fifth series was put forward by Ian Levine. Things for this new series were established, such as what these stories would be set around and Roger Parks being on board as a script editor and writer for the pilot episode. But it was ultimately rejected because of a lack of resources for special effects. It seems like that no more productions for the show were destined to happen, but in a way, they did. Well-known company for making horror films Hammer originally closed their doors in 1979, due to financial difficulties. In the 1980s, they ended up making two TV shows of one season each, House of Horror and House of Mystery and Suspense. The latter one of these remade both The Last Witness and The Uninvited as two episodes, being a distant scream and in possession. Overall, the BFI box set of Hour of the Unknown is nothing short of a landmark in my collection of science fiction and horror television. It starts off chronologically with the Quatermass trilogy box set by the BBC and the standalone Blu-ray remastering of The Pit. Most definitely, this is the earliest point of my love of television from a timeline perspective. By now, I probably don't need to state the impact that this collection of serials had, particularly the first one. Experiments very much brought to the small screen, science fiction and what pretty much paved the way for all television shows of this genre to come. If it wasn't for this, we wouldn't have Doctor Who and many more TV shows. The third serial of the bunch was also groundbreaking, particularly in my mind and for what my passions are in terms of TV with it very much being a blend of high concept science fiction and supernatural horror. Out of the unknown and what we can watch of it, therefore in my mind is very much a siphoning of the two genres that defined Quatermass and the Pit, and in turn effectively acts as a bridging point between the personal heights of Doctor Who and the general golden age of supernatural horror of the 1970s that I had mentioned earlier, as well as this type of television in general for me. A Ghost Story for Christmas, Beasts, the 1980s adaptation of The Woman in Black, and more. This show was very much holding hands with the past and looking around the corner for me. If you are at all a fan of science fiction and supernatural horror, then I simply cannot recommend Out of the Unknown enough.